Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Chandra. Chandra right now is $37 mid, but you can get a near mint one for a $28 ship to you on TCG Player and about $25 ship to you on eBay. Now I'm going to talk about Chandra in the context of not value, but in the context of hype and how hype surrounding a card and why article writers are a little biased. Now you have very smart article writers and they they know what they're doing. It's not like they hype up a card and it goes down, and then they hype up a card and again in another set. They clearly can see pattern recognition, and some of them are incredibly amazing pro players. And there's not this um, co there's not a concept. I never believe it's because they don't know better. A lot of times they do know better, but maybe they're writing for a site that will sell cards or benefits from selling cards at a pre-order hype price. $60 or $55 for a Chandra and having someone say it's good time to pick up your playset right now is to me very aggressive. I don't know if I can see that as a great speculation on, in any order because even if it goes up to let's say $90 where Jace went up to, you're still kind of, I mean you do have it to play with but if you were trying to make a profit from it, maybe you break even. If you buy at 60 and you can sell it at 60, that means its retail has to at least be 80, 85, if not 90. So you're really not going to make money that way, but if you wanted just to play with and it went up to 90, that would be great. But how many cards have done that? How many cards have gone up to $90 in standard? I can think of one, and his name is Jace, not Chandra. So Chandra looked amazing. She looks incredibly um powerful as a planeswalker but the thing is $60 is a lot of money $55 is a lot of money to pre-order a card there's really no place for that card to go up I mean at best you're hoping it does a Jace but the scenario with the masterpieces and it's just so unlikely so I think a lot of times that when a writer hypes up a card you have to look at or are they writing for an organization that benefits from hyping a card? And a lot of times the answer is yes. And that's not to say it's not a, you know, the article, the organization pays the writer, right? It pays a writer, it sponsors a writer. So there has to be some type of kickback. And that's logical and that's how business is done. But you as a MTG finance person or a speculator or even a player, especially as a player, have to ask where is this article coming from? What is the ulterior motive if there is any of the writer of this article? Are they trying to sell cards? And if the answer to that question is yes, they're trying to sell cards, then why would they try to sell you a card which goes up guaranteed to go up to like $100 if it's $60? That doesn't make any sense logically, right? I mean, yes, cash flow is an issue, but when they just keep the $60 card for themselves, and then once it went to 100 they would sell it for 100 Questions, right? All questions. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Talk to you guys later.